In state news, a rapper was booked into the Ascension Parish Jail after deputies responded to a call about a sexual assault case. 51-year-old Michael Tyler, also, also known as Mystical, was arrested on multiple charges, including first-degree rape and domestic abuse battery. Danger. A rapper known for his bars is behind bars this morning. Ascension Parish deputies arrested Michael Tyler, also known as Mystical. He's facing several charges, including first-degree rape, domestic abuse battery, and false imprisonment. Rapper Mystical is like a magnet for legal trouble. He's back in the headlines again for allegedly sexually assaulting a woman. And then there was another altercation that also happened in 2017. So this is the third thing that has happened to him regarding all that. Michael Lawrence Tyler was born on September 22nd, 1970 in New Orleans. Growing up in a single parent household with his mom, older sister Michelle and younger brother Maurice, Mystical faced challenges early in life. His father passed away when he was just seven due to complications from a blood clot. Despite the financial struggles, Mystical and his siblings felt loved and cared for by their mother, Marie Tyler. She kept them away from a life of crime and consistently encouraged them to excel in school and attend church. Despite the family's economic hardships, Mystical didn't perceive himself as poor because his mother shielded him from that harsh reality. Mystical attended Cohen High School, where he discovered his love for rapping. While he had been casually rapping for some time, it was in high school that he learned about the competitive nature of the art. One day, he was challenged by a fellow rapper in the hallway. This experience made him realize that, in addition to storytelling, boasting was a crucial element in the world of rap. Despite facing challenges, Mystical began to make a name for himself in New Orleans. Interestingly, his initial recognition came not from rapping, but from breakdancing with a group called The Converse. Eventually, Mystical's journey led him to connect with Beats by the pound producer KLC. As the popularity of dancing started to wane, Mystical fully immersed himself in the world of rapping in New Orleans. KLC, who stood at the forefront as a producer and DJ for a local group called 39 Posse, recognized Mystical's unique style and brought him into the studio to produce and record his early demo tapes. Despite his growing interest in music, Mystical decided to pursue further education after graduating from high school. However, as his rap career struggled to take off, he found himself wanting to contribute more productively. In a surprising turn, Mystical made the decision to enlist in the United States Army. This marked a significant shift in his path as he ventured into the military while still holding on to his aspirations in the world of hip hop. Because I, I still wanted to do something productive, but I, I, was, I was tired of school, I was enough of that shit. Sick of this shit. I, I joined the military and go get me a BMW or something, you know. When I joined... Around the time Mystical left for the military, KLC and his group 39 Posse released an album titled 39 Automatic. Learning about this release became a pivotal moment for Mystical, igniting his determination to pursue a career as a rapper. Oh, Soon as I left, they made a record. I'm like, what the? F I stopped shining my shoes. My, my uniform was wrinkled. Yeah, I knew it wasn't gonna last long. <laughs> After completing his service in the army, Mystical returned to New Orleans with a renewed mission to sustain his dream. To make ends meet, Mystical worked at various places, including a stint as a security guard at a shopping center. Believing that KLC could help him turn his hobby into a career, Mystical sought his assistance. Despite KLC's busy schedule with other hip-hop acts, he welcomed Mystical back and promised to produce an album for him. However, before this could happen, KLC had to finish his work with 39 Posse and Magnolia Slim, later known as Soldier Slim. While awaiting his turn to work with KLC, Mystical received a golden opportunity. He was invited to open an outdoor concert for Run DMC and Dougie Fresh at the Trem Center. Little did Mystical know that Lavroy Precise Edwards, the house producer and an executive for Big Boy Records, was in the audience. Mystical's performance, featuring a song called I'm Not That N-Word, alongside his sister on background vocals, impressed Edwards, earning them both a contract with Big Boy Records. Big Boy Records, also known as Boot Camp Click, was a significant independent record label in New Orleans at the time. Mystical and Big Boy Records began developing their relationship. Following the deal, Mystical started working on his debut album, titled Mystical, released on June 14, 1994. 
This marked a significant milestone for Mystical, overcoming struggles to not only secure a record deal, but also release a full album. Unfortunately, Mystical's celebration was short-lived. Just three months later, a tragedy occurred that would change his life forever. On his 24th birthday, September 22, 1994, Mystical's world crumbled. He found his sister Michelle dead in her room, strangled and stabbed. She was wearing a shirt promoting Mystical's song, I'm Not That N-Word, which made the tragedy even more painful. She wait, wait, wait. She was killed in the house. In the house. Other family members in the house at the same time. Really, really big house, upstairs and down. Michelle's boyfriend, Damian Neville, got arrested for her murder. Despite confessing initially, he later claimed the police forced the confession. During the trial, he suggested other criminals might be involved, and the jury found him not guilty due to a lack of evidence. Even though the jury acquitted Damien, Mystical always believed he was guilty. The pain of losing his sister lingered, making it hard for him to celebrate his birthday for about seven to eight years. Michelle's death deeply affected Mystical, and he dedicated a spoken word tribute to her on his next album. Years later, Mystical forgave Damien's family, showing a remarkable act of forgiveness for the tragedy that changed his life. After the tragic death of his sister, Mystical channeled his emotions into his music. His album Mystical, released before her passing, had already gained significant success, making it one of Big Boy's most successful albums. Local support caught the attention of New York's Jive Records, leading to a distribution deal. They reissued Mystical's debut with extra tracks as The Mind of Mystical in October 1995. The album sold over half a million copies, received widespread radio play, and later earned gold certification. Mystical found himself in conflict with fellow New Orleans rappers UNLV and the BGs. They dissed him in tracks like Drag Him in the River and F Big Boy. In response, Mystical showcased his skills with solid diss tracks, Beware, and Here I Go. As the rivalry between No Limit and Cash Money emerged, Mystical, previously with Big Boy Records, chose to sign with Master P's No Limit in 1996. Besides rap, Mystical shared a connection with Master P through personal tragedy, having lost his younger brother Kevin to a drug-related murder. The first album Mystical released on No Limit Records was Unpredictable in 1997. Master P encouraged Mystical to explore his feelings surrounding the tragedies. The album featured a tribute to his sister called Shine and a song addressing Damian Neville titled Murderer 2. It achieved immense success, reaching number three on the Billboard 200, spawning hits like Ain't No Limit and The Man Right Chi, and eventually receiving platinum certification. The success of Unpredictable led No Limit Records to want Mystical everywhere. He began collaborations and features on other label mates' projects while simultaneously working on his follow-up album. In the late 90s, Mystical collaborated with numerous artists, including RBL Posse and Big Lurch. He was notably active in the studio, working on a vast amount of music throughout 1997 and 1998. In December 1998, he released his follow-up album, Ghetto Fabulous, produced by KLC, one of the Beats by the Pound producers. The album reached number five on the Billboard 200, selling 365,000 copies in its first week and earning platinum certification within a year. Mystical continued his success in 1999, working with Mariah Carey on a song called Did I Do That, collaborating with Outkast, and being featured on numerous tracks. It's the kind of stuff that I want to be doing right now. Man, when I found out that she wanted to do, you know, wanted me to be on a song, on the soundtrack for a movie, it was, it was really exciting to me. However, no Limit Records began experiencing a downfall, with Beats by the Pound leaving due to a dispute with Master P. This raised concerns for Mystical, and in the early 2000s he also departed from No Limit. Entering the 2000s with determination, Mystical released the album Let's Get Ready, which propelled him into the mainstream rap scene. The album featuring hits like Shake Ya Ass and Danger topped the charts. Mystical's collaboration with Farrell and the Neptunes on Shake Ya Ass not only received extensive radio play, but was also featured in movies, including Scary Movie 2. Maintaining his momentum, Mystical released another successful album in 2001 called Tarantula. 
While it didn't surpass the success of Let's Get Ready, it was certified gold, received critical acclaim, and earned two Grammy nominations. The album featured collaborations with the Neptunes, KLC, and even Scott Storch. Mystical continued to showcase his versatility by working with Juvenile, Mariah Carey, and Ludacris in the same year. In 2002, Mystical released the single Stutter with Joe, which became a major hit in the U.S., reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100 for four consecutive weeks. He expanded his career into acting, securing a main role in a comedy movie, Making Baby, and later appearing in films like 13 Dead Men and the adult film Liquid City. At this point, Mystical's career was thriving, with widespread popularity and success in both music and film. However, as he reached the pinnacle of his career, the unexpected would once again alter the course of his life. On July 18, 2002, Mystical faced a devastating turn in his life. He, along with his two bodyguards, Mercy Carter and Leland Ellis, was arrested and charged with aggravated sexual assault and extortion. The allegations claimed that they threatened to expose his former hairstylist for unauthorized check transactions unless she performed oral sex. The woman reported complying out of fear and detailed further sexual assaults. A videotape confiscated by the police substantiated the accusations. During the trial, Mystical's lawyer negotiated reduced charges to sexual battery, avoiding a potential life sentence. In December 2002, Mystical pleaded guilty to sexual battery and extortion, receiving a six-year prison sentence. Additional probationary terms were imposed upon his release, including employment, substance abuse evaluation, and registering as a sex offender. Mystical began his prison sentence in 2004, serving until 2010. Legal troubles persisted, with a federal charge for not paying income tax leading to a concurrent sentence. Despite being eligible for parole in 2010, new charges delayed his release. Mystical eventually left prison on January 14, 2010. Upon release, he struggled to regain his momentum. His attempt to re-enter the music scene with tracks like I Don't Like You and collaborations with Lloyd didn't attract significant attention. In 2011, he signed with Cash Money Records, but his comeback was cut short when he faced another arrest in 2012 for domestic abuse battery. This led to a three-month jail sentence for violating probation terms. Despite collaborating with notable artists and remaining signed with Cash Money, Mystical's comeback was limited. He left Cash Money in 2014, citing creative differences. His troubles persisted, with another arrest in 2017 on charges of sexual assault. The charges were later dismissed due to lack of evidence. In July 2022, Mystical faced another arrest in Louisiana, this time for charges including simple criminal damage to property, false imprisonment, domestic abuse battery, strangulation, simple robbery, and first-degree sexual assault. If found guilty, Mystical could face life in prison once again. Mystical's life journey is marked by both triumphs and setbacks. Rising from a challenging background, he achieved success in the late 90s rap scene. However, a series of legal troubles, including a significant arrest in 2002, derailed his career and led to a six-year prison sentence. Despite attempts at a comeback, Mystical faced subsequent legal challenges, underscoring the volatile nature of fame and the enduring consequences of personal choices. His narrative serves as a cautionary reminder of the unpredictable trajectory in the world of music and the profound impact of life decisions on an artist's legacy.